Welcome to a new episode of Ausfahrt TV with me, Mr. Z. Today I'm presenting you the Volkswagen Golf GTD Variant. And Variant for Volkswagen means station wagon, estate, whatever. So uh, let's look back in time. The Golf was introduced in 1974. The first Golf GTD as um, a partner of the GTI was introduced in 1982 and was supposed to be the four first Gran Turismo diesel with 70 diesel horsepower. And it took Volkswagen until 1993 to present the first station wagon of the Golf because uh, in earlier times the Passat variant, so the station wagon of the Passat, wasn't big enough or was not as big as it is today. So uh, they didn't want to uh, be both cars sort of competitors in the same company. Do we see competitors? Yes, we do, especially from Volkswagen itself. We have the Skoda Octavia Combi and the Seat Leon ST which both are available with the same engine. And I would say, since we are very European today, um, the Ford Escort Tourneur, so the Estate version of the Ford Escort, and the Opel Astra Sports Tourer. In Germany, the Golf comes with various engines. For instance, we have two diesel engines. One is 110 horsepower, the other one has 150 horsepower. And by the way, in Geneva, at the Auto Show, this year, where this car was presented, there was another Golf Estate next to it with a little AR on the side. So the very sporty version with 300 horsepower is available now too. But we want to concentrate on the GTD today and you can order it with a manual 6-speed or with a 6-speed automatic transmission from Volkswagen, the DSG. And here it is, the engine of the GTD, that's a 2-liter 4-cylinder TDI with 184 horses and a maximum torque of 380 newton meters. And you get the full torque between 1,750 and 3,250 RPM. Well, here are some basic facts about this car. The Volkswagen Golf GTD variant accelerates from 0 to 62 miles or 100 kilometers per hour in 7.9 seconds and the top speed is reached at 142 miles per hour or 229 kilometers per hour. The gas tank of the 2015 Volkswagen Golf GTD variant is good for 50 liters or 13.2 gallons. Volkswagen claims a fuel consumption of 4.8 liters on 100 kilometers or 49 miles per gallon which means that under perfect condition you can drive up to 1040 kilometers or 640 miles without getting gas. The GTD variant has a length of 4.58 meters or 180 inch with a wheelbase of 2.63 meters equals 104 inch. Its height is 1.47 meters or 58 inch and it is 1.8 meters or 71 inch wide. As of the turn radius you need at least 10.9 meters of free space. The curb weight is 1495 kilograms or 3296 pound. The admissible total weight is 2020 kilogram or 4,453 pound. Um, I don't really have to introduce the uh, Golf GTD because th this one is already on the streets and if you have the normal version or the Estate version it looks the same from the front. However, with the GTI they have a red stripe throughout the front and here for the GTD they thought well chrome would be nice. So we have a chrome stripe going all the way through the front. And here at the uh, headlights, it is separating the dark turning signals from the big xenon uh, headlights with the LED 
day running light. However, we have a um, special bumper, front bumper here. It's a GT front bumper. It's shaped in a little bit more aggressive way, of course. We have the fins on the side here. Behind the fins, you have the fog lamps. And here, if you, you, you have the special grill in this hexagon design. And last but not least, we have the GTD badge on the grill as well. From the side view, we recognize the GTD by this little GTD badge. And the car is lowered, it's lowered on the street for 15 millimeters. By factory setting, the GTD variant stands on 17 inch alloy wheels, but we have the sport and design package, and this comes with those 18 inch alloy wheels. And I really like that uh, the brakes are colored in red and they don't even ask for extra money. Besides the colored windows on the back, that's part of the sport and design package as well. The car comes in nine different colors, of which we have three special GT colors. That's Tornado Red, Black and Pure White. On the rear, you recognize the GTD version on the left side. Here we have the GTD badge and a double exhaust system in chrome. Uh, besides that, it's a regular Golf variant. Uh, I just want to mention the spoiler on the roof, the blades or the fins on the sides. And of course, we have full LED backlights, uh, rear lights that are darker than the regular ones. Okay, uh, let me invite you to show you the interior. The door opens about 80 degrees, uh, perfect frame to enter the car pretty easy and I have no problems at all getting in the car. I have to lean out just a little bit to grab the door but it's not too heavy and I can close it easily. So welcome in the interior which is all in black and white. Uh, we have carbon fiber look-alike application in the door, in the center console and around the gauges. And we have this classical GT square um, textile cover for our seats, which I know from back in time when they introduced the first um, GTI and later on the first GTD. Um, so with all this black and white, the whole car invites me uh, to feel quite sportive uh, while getting in, especially the steering wheel gives me the feeling, hey, this is a sporty car. Um, I have enough space, I have lots of uh, headroom here and I know it's a compact car and we've driven yesterday uh, quite a while uh, with two grown-ups here in the front and I didn't feel uh, tightened or narrow or like I didn't have enough space. So um, everything is just uh, fine for a compact car. Uh, I want to mention that the roof is, uh, is covered with black textile uh, as well and you find a textile in the door panels. So uh, as an option you can get Alcantara or leather for your seats and then the door panels as well. But I'm fine with this textile because it looks good. Besides we have soft touch at all the places where you put your hands and just hard plastics down here. Um, yeah, so far, oh, uh, talking about uh, getting used to the car, the center console is facing me quite a little bit, which I like and everything is just in place. Uh, the only thing I have to complain about are the buttons on the steering wheel, but I will get to this later. Uh, you can adjust the height of the seat belts and just pull it out once so you can see how much space you have with the seat belts. Uh, the seats are sports seats by factory settings. You can adjust the height and you have uh, um, this uh, Lordosa thing in the back. And you can adjust them manually as well. Scoot in the very front and scoot in the very back. All right, the sports seats uh, give you quite a good side support. 
I like that. And uh, you have you can heat them up with three intensities, and the strongest one is really burning your back. And that's what I personally like. I like the uh, seat heating to really burn my back, so everyone else can just put it on stage two or one. All right, um, the steering wheel, I mentioned it before, I really, really like it. It gives me a good sporty feeling. It's coated with leather and the leather is even a, a pretty uh, soft leather. We have this white stitching and this uh, chrome application in the, in the three uh, stripes here. And uh, you have a good grip. You can adjust it manually. And I like uh, how much you can pull it toward you, towards you. Uh, what I don't like, oh, it's flattened on the bottom, at, uh, uh, by the way. And you have this GTD badge in here as well. And um, I am not too keen about the controls here, because on the left side, you control the ACC, the adaptive cruise control, as well as the volume. So you have a mix between car functionality and infotainment, while on the right side you have parts of the infotainment system like skipping a song or a voice recognition and uh, taking a call, as well as uh, control for the board computer. And I really enjoy more if you have one part for the car functionality and the other part for the infotainment system. But after driving one day, I got used to everything just fine. Um, if I look in the mirrors, I have to say, yes, those are just the Volkswagen Golf mirrors. But I think they are quite sexy when you look inside because they have this uh, nice shape. You see a lot from the uh, what's going on in the rear, so they're big enough. Same was for the mirror here inside. You see the full uh, window, the full rear window. So with all the mirrors, you can control what's going on in the back with ease. Turning my head around, uh, no problems with the B-pillar. And uh, turning over the right shoulder, A, B, C, no problem. And the D-pillar is not small, but it's not really disturbing my uh, view too much. Besides, as an option, I can take a rear camera, which has a nice picture and shows me where I'm driving as well. Um, and we have this uh, parking assist that show you how much um, distance you have to the objects. Besides that, as an option, you can get a parking assist, which parks and uh, the car uh, wherever you want to. And um, yeah, so no problems with the views. Um, we have two round gauges on the right side. Uh, the speedometer goes up to 280. The car runs to 30, so this is fine. Inside, there's a gauge for the fuel. On the left side is the RPM meter going up to 6,000 RPM and the red range starting at 5,000 with a little gauge inside as well for the temperature. In between the two round gauges, we have a small uh, display for the board computer, which is easy to read. And I like that you can uh, tell the system to present you the speed in a digital way. And it's really big and easy to read while you're driving. Uh, the infotainment system is a little bit uh, deeper than I know it from other cars, so I have to lower my view just a little bit, which I don't like too much, but it's okay, I guess. And uh, it has a, a rather matte uh, display, which is good to read, and I like how they present the information. All right, we have sort of a little ambient light. I haven't seen it too much because it was bright uh, the days and we didn't have the car at night time. So this uh, alloy stripe right here or this chrome stripe, whatever it is, below uh, you see or you might see a little uh, LED uh, st stripe that is illuminated in white. So you have these white stripes while you drive during the night. And um, I started it in English, so I will go on. In the sexy steering wheel, we have the honk in the center, and it sounds like this. Okay, uh, let's look at how much space we have and what kind of compartments. I like the door panels. They're huge. 
this uh, half a liter bottle just uh, is feeling really lost in the door panels. I think you can place easily uh, 1.5 liters or even more and you still have a lot of space and you rather watch if you put your wallet and drive a little bit crazy that it's not getting lost in the very back. And uh, next to the steering wheel on the right we have a little um, compartment for whatever and I think there's an SD card reader even I don't know for which purpose so um, in front of the stick of the DSG we have another compartment with a little door and it is pretty deep so my iPhone for instance easily fits in here which makes sense because we have a USB port and an aux in here as well and it is covered with an anti-slip surface well the floor, the ground of the compartment. Um, however, what I don't like too much is that it's, e uh, it's not easy to get the phone out once I have the GSG uh, stick in park, which I normally do when I park the car and I want to get my phone, that's not too easy, but I think you get used to it. We have two cup holders here, this half a liter fits in easily, if you don't use it you just close the thing and you have this little things here to prevent the smaller bottles from shaking. I think you can put up to a liter bottle in here or a big Starbucks, um, Starbucks cup. Um, our car is a smoker's car, they probably gave it to us because we are smoking, of course we didn't smoke inside. Uh, so there's an ashtray as well which fits in one of the cup holders. And we have a, a lighter here, wow, haven't had a car with a lighter for a long time. Well in front of the lighter you have another tiny compartment, most likely for change. And I like the armrest because you can adjust it in many ways. You can pull it out, scoot it back in, so pull out, and you can adjust the height as well. So this is probably the most highest thing I can find, and that's the very lowest. So the cup holder goes back in here. This uh, compartment is not too deep, but still you can put some stuff in there, and you have anti-slip surface on the ground as well. The gloves compartment is pretty huge, uh, enough place for two warning vests, the board material, documentation and uh, still more to put in there. You have coin holders, two SD cards and a SIM card reader. Um, we have, of course, sunshades, sunshades on both sides. Uh, they're illuminated with a light from above and the makeup mirrors are not the sun shades, and uh, you have a little ticket holder right next to the mirror. We have reading lights for the driver and the passenger for some reason. Oh yeah, I can turn it off and I can even turn on or turn off the lamps in the rear of the reading lights. And here we have a, a compartment for your shades or your glasses with anti-slip as well. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. Well, that's from the front. Let's look in the rear. Well, the E-State version is, of course, the family car. And um, I would like to check out how do I sit in the back. So uh, the door does not open as wide as the front door. The door is smaller as well. But still, I have no problems getting inside. It's easier to grab the door and slam it. Welcome on the back row. We have the same uh, textile here like on the front seats and in the doors and soft touch and everything is feeling all right. The seats in the back are quite comfortable, at least the two seats on the uh, outer sides. Just for <coughs> testing, yes, I can even sit in the middle. I sit a little bit harder. I I'm not really sitting on the locks for the, uh, for the belts, for the safety belts, but um, well, the people have to um, touch my ass if they want to buckle up. Um, so I don't see five grown-ups here for a longer ride, but if you just go to the next club or whatever, um, it might be okay. 
Besides here, I really am sitting fine and uh, you know I am 180 centimeters tall, so 5'11", but my Tobias, my mate who is helping me here, he is 5'6", uh, so 195 centimeters. And this seat is just put in this my position for 180 and he can still sit here in the back with his height all right. But if he sits in the front, I will have problems sitting in the back because he has to scoot back the seat uh, quite, a, quite a bit. And then it's getting a little tight back here. However, I have a lot of head uh, space as well. And uh, looking around, I have a compartment in the door panel where my half a liter bottle fits in and even a little uh, gaming console might uh, fit in next to it. I have in the center console no power, so no 12 volt outlet, no USB and no possibility to charge things for the kids in the back, which I think is not very clever by Volkswagen. However, we have at least uh, air outlets here to uh, cool the kids down. And um, here in the middle we have an armrest with cup holders, so this bottle fits easily in here and I can adjust these plastic things to uh, store even bigger bottles in here. Before I forget, I have uh, these bags here at the backrest of the front seat and this uh, bottle would fit in there as well. And um, thinking about kits, we have Isofix uh, thingies here. The locks of the doorbells are pretty stiff so kids can buckle up with ease. Um, the belts are long enough to easily uh, buckle up child seats or baby seats. And uh, we have reading lights for the outer places with LEDs, so they should be bright enough to read in here at night time. However, I don't like it that they put in the center. We have uh, grips on all four doors and here as well as here we have uh, little hooks for your jacket and I can lower the window, powered windows and they are tainted which is part of the style um, option we chose here, design and sport and they don't fold down in the doors completely which I think is really really sad, my kids hate it, they like to hang out their arm every once in a while and this is rather not cool. So, do we have any protection? Yes, my arm is not getting hurt at all. That's it from the second row. Let's check out the trunk. I can open the trunk pressing the Volkswagen badge or unlocking it at least with the key and that's all the key looks like by the way. So, let's open the trunk. The door opens two meters in height. And um, I have the privacy shield here that I can just press and then it's uh, vanishing, sort of. Let me get the stuff out here. So our uh, case for the tripod fits in there, so at least I have one meter of white. And by the way, I have to lift uh, the stuff 60 centimeters to place it in the trunk. Altogether, we have space for 605 liters or 25 cubic feet. Uh, let's look around. We have a little trap door here and below we find a spare tire. Oh wow, no tire fit, a real spare tire, but still there's enough space for um, putting quite some luggage or smaller stuff at least in here. And um, we can remove the privacy shield and store it under this trapdoor, which I think is pretty handy. Um, on the side, we have uh, little compartments here, enough for the emergency kit. On the other side, same size as well. We have a blanket in here. And here on the right side is a 12 volt outlet. We have two hooks for bags, like shopping bags, so they don't scoot around. And I can release two thingies here and remove the whole trap door. And there's a real, it's not too big, but still there's a real secret compartment where you can put stuff that you want to hide from someone. Let's put it back in here. And we have, uh, of course, four, oops, 
four leashes so you can you know tie up some stuff besides that that's it so far let me quickly uh, remove this um, security shield here this one and now I have to flip the back seats first so I have two uh, handles right here which easily flips them down for me and then I have this uh, net which I can use to um, protect things from falling to the passengers and I can now take both things and hide them in here which is not so easy as I thought because you have to remove the things on the side first. Once you flip the back seats you have space for 1620 liters of luggage if you put it up to the roof and uh, you have one meter of white until uh, if you don't flip the back seats you have 92 centimeters deep if you flip them until here you have 165 centimeters and to the passenger seat if it's fully uh, pushed to the front you have one meter and 90 centimeters of yeah of <laughs> long luggage that you can uh, store in here you can load up to 600 kilos or 1323 pound in the golf gtd gtd uh, variant and you can store up to 75 kilos on the roof if you want to you can pull trailers um, up to a weight of 1.5 uh, 1.8 sorry tons if they have their own brake otherwise they are not allowed to weigh more than 740 kilos let me quickly sum up my driving experience the steering wheel is a progressive uh, steering uh, and it works just with charm when you drive slow or you try to park it's really easy to steer once you drive faster it uh, the, the whole steering it's a little bit stiffer it's very direct I have no complaints at all. I've been on a little country road up and down the hills and uh, yes, I might say, boy, I had fun. It was really fun and the steering was part of it. Um, the DSG works with charm most of the time. Every once in a while it seems to uh, sink a little bit. It's like I'm pressing the pedal and it's like, well, do I shift back or not? Okay, I do it. And that's not there all the time but every once in a while at least once i use the pedal it shifts just on the point so um i don't know wh wh what's happening uh, we have different driving modes here we have a switch right next to the uh, stick of the automatic transmission and we have uh, different programs comfort normal sport eco and individual once we hit individual we see what we can um, what is happening once you change the program so it's um, affecting the DCC, uh, the steering, the engine itself, the ACC, the dynamic uh, cornering light and the climate control and you can choose between comfort, normal, sport and eco. So you can mix up everything to get your personal favorite setup which I think is pretty neat. Um, talking about sound, the regular version, so not the e version, has a sound acuter, so it's uh, producing artificial motor sound in the inside. The e version does not have this feature, I don't know why. Uh, it would suit the car quite well because the sound is not very sporty at all. Uh, if I go into sport, in the sport mode, I kind of think it gets a little bit louder, a little bit more sporty, but overall that's not like something that really excites me. Uh, but on the other hand, the car is a smooth runner. If you go in uh, comfort or eco and you just drive your miles down, um, it's really silent and you hardly hear any wind noises up to 160 kilometers per hour slash 100 miles per hour and I think that's that's pretty neat. Uh, the suspension is affected of course by the controls. If you go in sport it's a little bit more sporty, a little bit stiff but not uncomfortable at all. Once you go in comfort it's just fine for you. What else? Did I miss something? 
I don't think so. Oh well, you have 184 uh, diesel horsepower and uh, that's quite enough to drive quite sporty. As I said, up and down the hills on the country roads, I had fun. And here on the Spanish highway, uh, we have a speed limit of 120 kilometers per hour, so no excitement at all. And uh, well, the, accel the acceleration is not thrilling, but you can accelerate quite quick, at least it feels quick, so everything is just fine. We do have some assist systems here in the car. We have a traffic sign recognition system, so it shows me the speed limits here on the board computer or even on the map once I'm navigating. And um, we have an ACC, an adaptive cruise control, which works with charm. We have an uh, active lane keeping assist. So the car, once it recognizes the uh, roads, uh, well, the lanes, uh, and it scans with the camera the left for, for some lanes, and once it recognizes it, I get a green uh, icon here down at the round uh, gauge, and um, it steers itself. So even when I'm in, I'm in a curve, let me see, I can, oops, shit. So even when I'm in a curve now, I can, you know, put my hands away and it's steering by itself for a few seconds and I get a warning please put your hands back on the steering wheel. Um, we do have a blind spot warner, a small icon in the rear mirrors on each side which is uh, blinking well it is showing something in the blind spot um, flashing in, in, in orange and if you put your turn signal on anyway it's beeping and uh, flashing so it tries to get your attention works with charm as well uh, you have a parking and uh, leaving the parking spot assist i haven't really tried because uh, i didn't park here too much and we have a front assist helping us to um, to avoid uh, collisions so overall all the systems work fine and give me a real benefit as a driver i like them and they're good choices to choose uh, at least in germany you have to uh, put them in your configuration because they're optional filming our reviews is quite stressful because we have a lot of time pressure but when you're here in spain in beautiful andalusia and the sun comes out well all the pain is gone and we are quite happy uh, that we have our job and we have a lot of fun doing this stuff however it's time to sum up my impressions about the volkswagen gtd no the volkswagen golf gtd variant the estate version uh, the Golf for me is more a practical car than an emotional car. However, the GTD gives the car a sporty look, feeling, and you can even drive it sporty. Yes, you have a front wheel drive, but other than that, um, you can have a lot of fun with this car. And I think the interior helps a lot as well. Um, it's a practical car too, you have a huge trunk, you can put a lot of stuff in there, you can drive with at least four grown-ups long distance. I can't tell you too much about the fuel consumption because we didn't drive enough in a regular way to give you numbers that would really uh, fit and suit. However, I think um, buying this car isn't a bad choice at all um, if you want to buy a car that makes sense for you. Okay, that's it from my side. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, I'm happy if I see some thumbs up. If you have any questions, please put them below in the comments. And I'm happy if you share our videos on YouTube, on Twitter, on Google Plus or Facebook or VK even. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm saying goodbye. Your host was Mr. Z. I'm sorry for my broken English. I hope uh, your ears are not bleeding yet. So uh, stay tuned and tune in back next time when it's again Ausfahrt TV.